What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Oe. Dustin is with me once again. We're going to be giving our spoiler review of episode eight for The Last of Us series, which uh, we've had a lot of up and downs with this show so far. And last week's episode seven, seven was definitely a downer for me. I think Dustin thought it was a kind of mediocre, too, I think. But uh mm-hmm. We pick things right back up in episode eight, and it's not a flashback. We're moving forward in time, which I appreciate. And this episode was, I know you're not a fan of this, even though you never played the game, but this is almost a cut and paste episode from the video game. Uh, Something's missing and some character changes that uh, I actually liked better than the game. That was particularly in the character slash villain of David but we'll get to that in a little bit. But I enjoyed this episode. I wasn't blown away, but I enjoyed it. Well, what was your overall thoughts of this episode, Gus? Yeah, I liked it better. I liked it better than um, the last episode. But uh, I'm not going crazy anymore with this show. I've told myself this was a good episode, but I'm not going crazy anymore. It's just, it's just good. So, you know, that's that. No more, no more highs and lows. I'm just gonna accept it for what it is. It was a good episode. That's it. <laughs> I'm going keeping it simple. Yeah, I think I would have been way more hyped to see this episode if episode seven didn't exist or if it was condensed maybe into mm-hmm. this episode as well. If it was like one big super episode with flashbacks. But uh, yeah, I would have been more excited if episode seven and kind of kill the pacing and the momentum for me. But this was a good episode. Uh, we open up uh, almost like a scene from the video game with Ellie hunting for food in the video game though she's a pretty proficient killer she's killing rabbits and hunting with a Mm -hmm. bow and arrow but in the series version she's using the sniper to hunt the rabbit which she misses in the video game she does not but uh, she gets a larger game with that deer who she does tag and she Mm -hmm. uh tags that deer and follows it as joel you know joel's uh he's doing a lot better than he was in episode seven he was hanging on for dear life but uh he's hanging on by a thread in uh, this episode when we meet David, right, the pastor, yeah, with the he's, with the deer that Ellie hunts, uh, she's kind of tracking where she killed the deer, and she runs mm-hmm. into David the pastor. Which let's, uh, yeah, you're right. Let's go back to David because we actually open up with David, right? Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I'm getting things mixed up. We opened up with David in this uh, episode, and he's a uh, a pastor, and he's given, uh, you know, I forgot what uh verse he's uh, telling his people, but uh, he's definitely got. I mean. Uh, you know, victim apparently of, of like, if you understand history of like the 90s, you remember Waco, Texas? Oh, yeah, David With, Koresh. Uh, David Koresh, yeah. Yeah. Presently, the, the name's the same, but you definitely got those vibes from him right off the start that this guy is a cult leader, um, about ready to give everybody, you know, some burn the house down, drink the Kool Aid, whatever. But you definitely got the vibes from him right, right off the bat that that's how he is. Yeah, he's a religious type and he has a whole bunch of religious zealots in the opening mm-hmm. sequence. And for being religious people, they made him really dumb. They always portray Christians and religious people in these mm-hmm. type of shows to be completely dumb and they just need a leader. So that, that was kind of a bummer for me. It's like, all right, here we go. Another dumb group of religious people that are just completely drones to one leader. But um, they're pretty desperate yeah. and they're pretty doom and gloom. I do not want to be a part of this group at all. They, uh, You could tell that uh, even though they had a leader in David, they mm. didn't look like a pretty particularly happy bunch. Well, it started off with the daughter uh, mourning, saying that, uh, you know, can we bury him yet? So obviously she lost her father, right? I love how that inner story connects with the whole episode is then where we you, you catch up to what um ellie meeting him at the, with the with the big deer and then he tells her the story about how they're you know they just lost the father and everything like that and it was some guy and a girl that killed him lo and behold you know you put it together just there that was last episode with joel or episode six it was episode six yeah him. at the very end yeah it was joel that killed the father it was nicely intertwined i'll give it that it was no, definitely, yeah. you know, definitely well written. Yeah, it's well written because it, it comes from the game. That's exactly what yeah. happens in the game. It's the same group that Ellie and Joel run into in that university. And in the game, video game, Joel slaughters like 20 of them. But in this game, it's just one person. And um, that's that little girl's father that David is consulting. And he has a pretty weird vibe already. Um, but he, yeah, he, the guy, I, I don't know the actor who plays him, but he did a good job because... Uh, He's got like that soft side, which is still creepy. And he has a real sinister side that he reveals at the end of the episode. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, Ellie, um, she runs into him. Um, 
she runs into James, his right hand mm-hmm. man, and David as she finds that deer. And James, by the way, is played by Troy Baker, who is in fact the voice actor of Joel in the video game. So fun fact oh. for you there. Easter egg. Yeah, little Easter egg. Nice. So you got Joel versus actually Joel doesn't fight Joel at all. It'd be nice to have like a fight scene between Pedro Pascal's Joel mm-hmm. and the Troy Baker's character. But they, they never meet in this episode, but she runs into him and she's, you know, she catches them off guard with the sniper rifle. She's like, hey, you know, I'll I'll put you both down right now. This is my kill. Um, if you want to make a trade, let's trade for meds. Mm. Troy Baker, aka Joel, go get some meds and I'll let you guys go. So that's the deal. David stays behind to, you know, build a fire for Ellie, which in the video game, it's a lot more, it, it almost plays out the same way, but there's also clickers involved, which this series has once again gone on, out of its way to not include infected or clickers. But the thing is, David feels really creepy at the beginning in the video game when you meet him. You're like, I'm not really sure about this guy. But then Ellie mm-hmm. and him are forced to work together against a horde of clickers and infected which kind of, okay, maybe, and they get through it in the video game, which is like, okay, maybe I can not trust this guy a little bit, and she lets her guard down. In the show version, they kind of just, you know, meet up, he sets up a fire, and they had that conversation that you were talking about, where and she learns a little bit more about him, and how he's a pastor mm-hmm. and all this, and how kind of reveals that, you know, he's part of the group, and um, Ellie and Joel. I, I mean, I, I like, uh, now that you told me that, because I was going to point that out a little bit later, that... We have not yet seen a horde of clickers since episode five, I believe. We haven't seen infected, which is based what this whole show was based upon, right? I mean, infected and clickers, you know, the last of us. But uh, we haven't seen any of that. But uh, when you told me, right, just right now that in the video game, they go up against a whole bunch of clickers to gain trust. I guess I could see why they omitted it from the show. I mean, um, I, you know, you have to, again, it's all about building a character and building a story. And if you, I, I can see the difference that if during the gameplay, yeah, I guess you want to take a time off from the from the storyline and get and start playing the game and shooting and killing. We're probably in the uh, the show that would be out of place, I guess. So yeah. I can understand that. No, they could have included it somehow and still had that pivotal scene of them in the campfire where. Uh, David tells Ellie he knows who she and Joel are and that they killed yeah. one of his people. They could have included a scene with them having to work together to kind of let Ellie gain a little bit of trust in David before he reveals that uh, bomb on her, which you know, right away, you know, um, James, a.k.a. Troy Baker comes in with the medicine and uh, David mm. decides to let her go. He's like, you know what? We'll give you the medicine. We'll let you go. Go ahead. Run back to Joel. Save your friend because we're going to track you down later anyway. So, yeah, Ellie gets the medicine. She runs back to her little vacant house where Joel is uh, passed the hell out. He's not doing much the last two episodes, but he he Mm. does have a part to play in this episode at the end where he does have some good scenes. But, um, yeah, Ellie uh, gives the penicillin uh, to Joel, which that for sure saved his life. He wasn't living without that medicine at all. Yeah, you're right. It was an easy two days of work for uh, for Pedro Pascal. He just laid there doing nothing while Ellie took the uh, the lead, which has been really emphasized in the last two episodes. First, with the you know the flashback with Fedra saying that you know she's a natural born leader, and now you see her also being a natural born leader again. David mentions it later in the episode. Uh, so a lot of um, growth with leadership with Ellie in this ep- in the last two three episodes probably. Yeah, pretty, she, pretty cool. She's got what it takes to survive, and I um, mean, she saves Joel without the medicine. Yeah. Joel is kaput; he's done. Uh, but in doing all this, David, you know, he goes back to his group of people um, with that deer. He, he even takes Ellie's kill, which that damn bastard. Mm-hmm. But uh, it doesn't matter anyway because they got full stomachs because they don't just eat deer; they eat people. This is a cannibal group, and it's mm-hmm. slowly uh, revealed. Uh, in this creepy ass scene when David comes back to his people and uh, they learn that they got Ellie and the little girl, mm. you know, the uh, daughter of the guy who Joel killed, you know, mm. interrupts David in, during his little speech and he goes up to her and slaps her and then consoles her again while he's mm. doing like, like very cultish, like very, that is like, very break, cultish. Yeah. Like break the, them down. The cannibalism. Let's go back to the cannibalism. That was 
sort of reference and inferred um when I guess see they gave her they gave the cooks some venison yeah. and she looked at it and said, What is that? Yeah. And I thought, what is that supposed to mean? I didn't think I didn't really catch on at first. And then when when they when they revealed that they were cannibalists, I was like, Okay, I get it. Well, because David did say that uh, you know, that only a few people know about it. Yeah, and also in the beginning, she wants to bury her father's body, and he's like, No, nah, it's too cold yeah. to wait. Which is come yeah, on. Yeah, that man. made yeah. Dig that a made so much sense. Everything is, was really intertwined in here. I liked it. It yeah. was really cool. Yeah, I like I like that part. Um, but you know, he slaps her, he breaks her down, and brings her back up. Very, very, you know, cult leader like to do that mm-hmm. to someone. And he's also yeah. has creepier intentions. Like if you pay attention to the yeah. way he treats and like looks at the little girls, especially like yeah. Ellie at the end, it's like, man, this guy's mm-hmm. a freaking psychopath. He's a creep. definitely a definitely a cult. Yeah, one thing, if a little tidbit, if you didn't see the detail, he got a nice plate of food. Well, everybody else was like, you know, but a couple spoonfuls yeah. of a bowl. And then he's got this massive, I guess, Thanksgiving plate yeah. that he gets to eat off of. So, yeah, nice, uh, nice leadership. He's smiling as he's eating the human meat and everyone's just digging in there. All mm-hmm. you hear is the cl- the clanks and the, the food as they're eating. Yeah. people. It was a pretty creepy scene. Pretty creepy scene. Yeah. I wish the, the townspeople would have played into more of the episode because they're kind of just like a broken flock of people. I wish they played into mm-hmm. a more sinister cultish. Like if you're going to make these like religious people like idiots and just drones to David's, you might as well just made them all evil too. But they're kind of just like, you know, we got to do this. To How were they like in the game? Were they, the were game, they more? It's kind of implied that they're kind of religious because when you're like traversing through the level, you see mm-hmm. like biblical verses like you kind of do in the in the show mm-hmm. it's never really implied that he's a pastor or anything so that's definitely all new to the game but they were but they were basically just mind uh mind numbing you know flock right they weren't really well they were cannibals they were cannibals yeah. I but think, they were uh, but in the gameplay they weren't they weren't portrayed as crazy cannibalistic you know no, they were they just weren't like in the in the show it's like david james and like a few people know about this but i think mm-hmm. in the video game like they're all down for it ellie when she goes back to joel they're able to track her the next yeah. morning david and his group you know ellie devises a plan to distract everyone so they don't find joel's passed out body she gets on the horse but james yeah. troy baker he's got that shot he got that mm-hmm. one shot hitter yeah i this is when i really started uh sort of catching on to david because you know he, they were gonna kill her off gets a vengeance and all that stuff and he saves her but the way he saves her you can just tell he had other plans for her. it wasn't like mercy it wasn't uh him trying to be forgiving and yeah. it was great acting you can sense it from him uh through the camera that uh he had another purpose for saving her yeah so. james uh his right hand man was also he kind of was the more merciful one he's like let's just kill her and get it over with yeah, yeah. he knows what's in store for her but oh, yeah, yeah like okay. you said david is like no 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 we keep her alive you know um okay. we gotta keep her alive in his like creepy little tone, calm demeanor. Mm-hmm. But like you said, he has more sinister plans for her, yeah. which he does. She wakes up in his cell, and they mm-hmm. I like the I actually like the conversation with Ellie and David when she's learning about him, and you get to mm-hmm. learn the sinister side of David. Yeah. And he he kind of exclaims he's you know, he's not religious as, at all. He's kind of been using this yeah. as a front because he knows it's gonna work. And the thing he worships is the cordyceps, is the fungi. He's like, this mm-hmm. is God now. He's like, I've always been violent. And this apocalypse, this plague has let me become who I really am. It's like, damn, that's that's some deep shit. This guy's really freaking crazy. So well, let's go, let's go. I'm pretty sure to your favorite part, which is finally seeing Joel kick some ass. Yes. Uh, just stabbing yes. everybody, killing everybody. Um, a lot more up close violence uh than I think has any been through the whole show, right? I haven't really seen that up close uh, uh violence uh yeah i mean stabbing a guy through the kneecap i mean it was it was pretty cool it was nice to see him finally just go at it yeah he, he recovered up. really quickly though i was surprised on that one he was like pretty yeah. much half dead to all of a sudden like being rambo again yeah you gotta yeah you gotta suspend your disbelief that joel was ever was able to recover and mm-hmm. do that much damage to like a group of like six guys that were looking for him but he's able to dispatch most of them I mean, he's struggling, but he's doing it pretty easily. I mean, he's just taking them out. Like you said, he's violently taking them out, strangling them, stabbing them. And mm-hmm. uh, we get that really cool interrogation scene 
it's straight from the video game too. I was wondering uh, if they were going to shy away from it, but no, he, he it almost it happens exactly like the video game. The first guy he stabs him in the knee, has him point mm-hmm. on the knife where the the location of their little uh, headquarters is, and he kills him anyway. And the other guy's like, "Listen, I'll tell you whatever whatever you want. I'll tell you." He's like, mm-hmm. "It's all right. I believe the other guy," and just yeah. kills him too. That was so yeah, bad with the pipe. With the pipe, yeah. that was pretty cool. Pipes that was uh, that was I haven't seen that side of Joel, you know, actually throughout the whole series, I believe. You know, just pick up a pipe and just, you know, uh bludgeon the guy. Uh so that was again, I was finally got to see Joel be the badass that you've been claiming him to be this whole series. Uh, and you really kind of get to see that this time. So you finally. don't get yeah, so you're not getting hints that Joel's capable of this type of shit. That's how much they've watered him down. Like, yeah, they have right. watered him down. You know, I've, I've seen him. I, I pictured Joel more as the caring uh, father who lost his daughter, um, had to do what I had to do to to survive, uh, and then looking for his brother. And then, you know, and then he, he's portrayed now as the guy who is being a father figure to Ellie. And I haven't seen what you've been telling me about, which is him, Mr. Violent, Mr. Just Kills Everybody, until this episode. And we only got to see it for, like, what, maybe three deaths? Three people that he killed, you know, close hand to hand combat. Um, so I'm pretty sure you were happy about that. Yes, I was like, yes, I was like flexing. I was like, yes, Joel, kill these mother effers, stab them all, strangle them, do what you got to mm-hmm. do. Because finally, because when you're playing the video game, you are Joel. <laughs> like you, right. you, you've been through it all, so you've been in the shoes. You've slaughtered like hundreds of men with bricks, guns, and anything at your disposal. To so finally see Pedro Pascal's Joel catch up. And do that sort of thing was gratifying. I wish there was more mm-hmm. of it because, like you said, they've been you know they've been going out of their way to not show violence and portray Joel as the violent individual that he yeah. is in the video game, and for good reason. It comes up, it comes back to haunt him. Uh, I don't yeah. want to spoil anything else other than that. But yeah, Joel's violence and history of violence is a big part of his character. But uh, yeah, he you know finds out where she is, and he's on his way to go get Ellie. But back to Ellie and David. As she's learning about David and how sinister he is and how he's telling her, like, oh, you're a leader, too. I could feel it. And we could be more. Mm-hmm. And Ellie Ellie knows what David wants. And when he has that, her hands together on mm-hmm. the bar, she's like, this mother effer, I'm going to play into him. She kind of plays into him, touches his hand, and she breaks it, which yeah. uh, was a pretty cool scene. And that yeah. happens in the video game, too. Um, and she also sees, like, the ear on that mm-hmm. little table, the little kitchen yeah. uh, cutting table where the, where the cannibalism was uh, confirmed yeah. yeah so she figures it out and since uh, ellie doesn't give david what he wants him mm-hmm. and james put her on the table and they're about to chop her you know make some chop i like i like that i like that that line that he said when he was leaving uh she was like saying hey tell ellie i was the one that broke your your effing finger and he just looks back and he says how'd you put it you know little pieces yeah i was like that, that was pretty sinister that was a cool little line that would that would strike fear in anybody yeah, that David. You just know he's, that's what's gonna happen to you. He was a great villain, man. David was a great villain. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I like this version of David way better than the video game. To yeah, be very with you. cerebral. It made yeah. you definitely, you know, made you. He would, he would uh, intimidate you mentally before yeah. he even touched you, and that was really cool. I, I like that type of villain. Yeah, because even though he looked like a creep right off the back, I could kind of see how he's been manipulating this group of weak individuals to follow him or whatever. And plus, mm-hmm. he's feeding them full meals every night, even though it's dead people, which is pretty creepy. And uh, Joel, just when he's trying to find Ellie and he's going through the blizzard in the town, he finds that little shed. Um, mm. finding he the finds the bodies. hanging bodies. Yeah, that was yeah, the hanging that, bodies was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you didn't play the video game, but a lot of this is cut and paste. So I was like, holy shit, I feel like I'm playing the video game again, uh, especially yeah. with um, James and David putting Ellie on the operating table about to make mm. her into chop suey and they're about to do it. And she shows them like, Hey, I'm infected. And they become hesitant right off the back. Like, Oh shit. Yeah. Like, and she bites David too. So he's like, Oh, am I infected? So that was a pretty good scene. She buys him. Yeah. I, I was a little confused about that scene because if she admits that she was infected, I mean, I think uh, nerve wise, I would have just chopped her off, you know, cause she's infected and she's going to, 
before before she even turns, you'd want to kill her right off the bat. Right? But she I bit mean, David too, so that kind of puts David in a crazy situation. He's like, "Oh shit, am I infected? Like, is this really? Mm. Is she really infected? Because if she's infected, that means he's infected." So I could see that they didn't want to kill her off the bat because there was just crazy confusion going around that mm. you know whole situation, which allows Ellie to catch the jump on him, and she grabs a yeah. little cleaver while they're like figuring shit out, and she axes uh james right in the james. throat so yep r.i.p james r.i.p troy baker aka joel from the video game so and yeah, that leads it to her. she got a couple of minutes to do it i guess yeah yeah she, she got what it takes to survive she's smart and she's observant she knows how to take advantage of a situation mm. so uh, i like that uh survival instincts from ellie but yeah. uh this scene it plays a little bit more intense in the video game because once you escape that little area you have to mm -hmm. do a little stealth mission, you know, a little Metal Gear Solid mission mm -hmm. from the whole town because the whole town's looking for in this blizzard, which there's not really a lot of people roaming around this area. She just leaves that little kitchen and goes straight into the dining room area where David is hunting her down. And um, yeah. This and I, again, there was a little, little, little 30 seconds there where she was trying to get out the door. And if you look closely again, there's glass at the door. I just say, take a chair and break it. Take a chair and break it. And then she says she decides to run the opposite direction. So I get it as part of the, the, the show just to keep it moving. But um, I couldn't help but think that. Like, just break the glass and get out of there. Yeah, she easily you know? could have took a chair, broke the glass, jumped out. But maybe she didn't want to alert anyone else. Or maybe she just didn't have the strength to do it. I don't know. But either way, this happens. Or it's just written game. that way. It's just written that way because it happens mm -hmm. in the video game. This is a boss yeah. fight in the video game where David's looking around for her talking shit and she's hiding from dining room table to dining room table. So this plays almost exactly like the video game beat for beat. And okay. um, she stabs him, but you know, David still overpowers her and pins her to the floor where uh, his true intentions come out. And this guy, he's yeah, a little pedophile, this guy. He, yeah. He's a little pedo uh, and he's, I don't even think you could say that word, but yeah, he's a little pedo. <laughs> he's, he's I mean, a, that's what he is. That's uh, what he is. Yeah. You two might flag he's a us for saying that. Yeah, yeah. He's a classic cult, um, you know, child <laughs> lover. Yeah, he That's takes he advantage is. of his power and abuses it. And uh, he was also mentions that he was a math teacher back in the day, too. So who knows what this. Oh, yeah, I didn't catch that up to. Yeah, he mentions yeah, he was a math teacher that. in all this. Uh, so, yeah, David, man, what a, he's a creepy ass dude, but a fascinating villain nonetheless. But he's putting Ellie down, talking all the shit in the world which allows Ellie to reach for the cleaver and just, you know, serve it to David, rightfully mm -hmm. so. He gets uh, cleaved up himself in the tiny bits, all that shit he was talking, and Ellie mm -hmm. was able to turn the tables, which... Uh, I was really thinking that uh, out of nowhere, um, Joel comes out and just, you know, pops one in his head, uh, but they gave the kill to Ellie. Yeah. Which I, I guess was pretty cool. I was hoping, you know, because Joel was basically hanging around and trying to find her, and I thought that he was going to come out of nowhere and just... You see a bullet just come straight through David's head, courtesy of Joel. But um, I guess I guess the the ending of uh, Ellie with the cleaver to the what to the neck uh, to everything. Oh, she she chopped him into pieces. You don't get to see it, but she goes crazy and rightfully so because she was a she was about to be taken advantage of for yeah. her. That had been the worst situation. So she uses all that anger and aggression and just takes him out. As the building is burning down, just like the video game. And in the game, mm -hmm. Ellie kills him as well. Joel is not the one to kill David. This happens frame by frame, almost just like mm -hmm. the video game. But uh, Joel, you know, finds her right after she does it. She doesn't go outside the building. It's kind of right after it happens. But in the show, you know, she gets to escape off the off the building. But how the doors open? Do you remember that? Remember how she couldn't? You you mentioned it earlier, like she couldn't get out. But when I Joel's think, about um, to approach that building, we didn't see it. But um, you know, he he did mention to her as he was chasing around that uh, he's the only one with keys. So we didn't get to see the 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 part. But she probably just grabbed his keys and opened okay. the door. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, but yeah, um, yeah Joel's just wandering outside and he uh, sneaks up on Ellie, and Ellie's about to yeah. kill him too. But she realizes that it's Joel. He has the famous mm. line from the video game, "Baby girl." Baby girl, it'll be okay. That's straight from the mm -hmm. video game as well, just to solidify their father-daughter relationship and how much mm -hmm. they mean to each other. And um, 
It's a happy ending. It's a happy ending. Okay. But it, it, in this show, it just doesn't make sense because all this chaos is going down and uh, the building's burning down. And just they both just calmly walk into the forest near the lake mm-hmm. where there's yeah. a whole town that probably yeah, is aware I, that I, their center is burning to crisp. And no that was the, uh, the one thing I noticed. I was like, I, I saw them walking away and I'm going, you guys are walking towards the lake. Like, I'm going, where's the, where's the boat? Where's anything? You guys are just yeah. walking towards water uh, in the middle of winter. It's not, uh, where exactly you guys going? Yeah, so I, I that, noticed that, that at the end of the thing. That confused the hell out of me. They're just calmly walking towards the lake or the river. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, you guys just burned down this place. And there's like 20 people still here that are going to be very yeah. pissed off. Get the hell out of there. But that's how mm-hmm. the episode ends. It ends in like a calm manner, but yeah, in the game, it's more intense. The yeah. Huh? In, the, yeah. in the game, there's like a blizzard going on and everything. So amidst all the chaos, it's really hard to, you know, see, but in the show, there was only like a blizzard for like two seconds and then everything yeah. was clear, but uh this was a good episode. I liked it. It didn't blow me away because, uh, like I said, I think this episode needed to happen last week. But it, okay. it was a good episode nonetheless. Um, but I mean, it, it was good. Uh, one thing that I, I just kept thinking about is, where are we ever going to see the big infected clickers slash big blobby people again? I mean, that's what I just kept thinking to myself. This is a good episode, but the whole series is based on the infected and and uh these the the you know the, the fungi i'm like where is this where have they been throughout this entire tv show i'm because i'm pretty sure throughout the game you get a whole you know a lot of dosage of these guys and through this tv show uh episode three maybe episode three episode five episode two episode, episode two. one two uh three five. a little bit of three five and episode seven. seven and seven that's it and it's, and i think it was only episode five and they were in kansas city when we saw a whole bunch of hordes of them yeah. coming up and, and then they just disappear again so i mean is this show even about infected anymore well, i don't even know it had been nice to have more encounters with the clickers and infected just as like i, I said this last review is like we just need to feel more of the threat in this world because it has that Walking Dead vibe where it's like, it's not just the zombies, it's the people, mm. it's humanity. They're the real villains. So I've seen that storyline played like a thousand times in The Walking Dead, which I was okay mm. to see it again, play again in, in The Last of Us, because it's one of the major themes is humanity is one of the biggest threats. But it's like, I mean, I think each episode has a budget of like 10 million. You can't use any of that on some clickers and like a few infected kills just to show that they're around. So yeah. It's a, bu- it's glad- a budget of 10 million. 9 million goes to Pedro. That's basically <laughs> what it is. That's that's uh, 9 million goes to Pedro's bank account. So let's not, let's not confuse that part. Yeah. We know what I the star is here. I mean, I will star. respect the show because they use practical effects and real locations. I mean, not once do you ever believe like they're, they're in front of a green screen and this is all fake. So that's yeah. one thing I could respect about the show, but I'm glad you asked it. Where the hell are the clickers? <laughs> Where are they? I mean, that's so this why is episode like- seven. You said it's episode only eight episodes in the series. Nine. We got one more. Nine next episodes. week's the finale. Next week's the finale. We might get two uh, clickers. <laughs> might get two. It, two we'll infected, get, maybe two clickers yeah. and a bloater, and then they'll wrap and a it bloater. up. Yeah, and that's it. Wrap it up. We'll see. I, I haven't seen the preview for uh, the season finale yet, so I'll have to check it out. But let's just give our rating for episode okay. eight of The Last of Us. I'm going. I mean, I liked it, but it didn't blow me away. And I experienced it before. Uh, I'll give it a three point five out of five. I'll give it a three point five okay. out of five. Uh, I'm sticking with my three. I'm going with the three only because, again, it's. Uh, I'm just looking at this series. This show as a series total. Uh, I'm not going to fall for the ups and downs anymore. I'm just going to take it uh, as is. And so it's a three for me. It's basically the whole series is a three for me, I think, if it averages it out. I think I'm with you on that, dude. I think I'm really, uh, yeah, if I had to average it out, even if next episode is a five out of five, mm-hmm. I'm, I might give it a 3.5 out of five as a series altogether. But yeah, I think I'm with you. Three out of the five only thing that saves series. this series for me is the acting, the the great acting and the great arcs. Um, I mean, even this episode, it was a great arc for David. We saw him as this. We thought he was a gentle pastor, and find out he's a uh, 
psychopathic uh, uh, child lover. So yeah, he's a creep. Kudos yeah. to the actor. We I don't know his name, but he he played a great uh, villain. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, everyone. That's our review, our spoiler review of episode eight of The Last of Us. Post down in the comment section below if you thought of the episode. What would you rate it? Let us know. If you like what we do, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel as well, ring that notification bell, and we'll see you all next time. See ya.